real estate investors before you stop watching this video let me ask you a question how do you do a 1031 exchange and avoid paying taxes you don't know all right don't worry because in this video i am going to reveal how to do a 1031 exchange and avoid paying taxes so you can keep more money in your pockets and less out of uncle sam's and by the way if you are new to watching any of my content my name is Nikki Burns and I help real estate investors to build six to seven figure businesses and pay the least amount in taxes so they can buy more real estate and expand their investment portfolio. So let's get started, shall we? Yeah, let's get started. Now before I get into all that good stuff, I want to first define what a 1031 exchange is. So a 1031 exchange is a tax strategy that allows real estate investors to defer or avoid paying taxes on the sale of an investment property. And the investor will use those proceeds from that sale to purchase another like-kind investment property. During the sale of an investment property, there are two types of taxes that you may have to pay during that sale. The first one is a capital gains tax which is a tax that's applied when there's a gain on the sale of an investment property. The second type of tax is the depreciation recapture tax, which is a depreciation deduction offset against a property that becomes taxable once you make a sale. So in other words, you would have to pay taxes on that gain and on the depreciation that you have reaped the benefits of deducting over the years which I'll explain in a little bit more detail later. Now with the capital gains tax, there are two types of capital gains taxes that you would incur. Either you would have to pay the short-term capital gains tax rate, or you would have to pay the long-term capital gains tax rate. Now just to break down both of those different capital gains tax rates, let's start with the short-term capital gains tax rate. Now the short-term capital gains tax rate is a tax on property that has been sold and it was held for one year or less. Now with the short-term capital gains tax, these tax rates are a lot higher than the long-term capital gains tax. And these taxes are based on your filing status and your income level. So let's break it down with an example. So let's just assume that you purchased a single family residential real estate property for $110,000. And then you sold that property within one year or less of having it. You sold it for $200,000. Now you have just realized a capital gain of $90,000. So let's just assume that your filing status is single. So your income bracket, you would fall in the tax bracket of 24%. So the 24%, now the 24% tax rate your income has to be between $85,526 and $163,300. Now, since we had a gain of $90,000, we fall in between that $85,000 and $163,000 bracket. So to determine your total tax that you would have to pay on that short-term gain, you would take $14,605 plus 24% of any amount in excess over $85,526, which would give us a total short-term gain tax, a total short-term capital gain tax of $15,680. Now moving on to the long-term capital gains tax. So these are properties that you sold that you have held for more than one year. So for someone that has that has made $53,601 to $469,050, they would be taxed at 15%. And back to our example that we had a gain of 90,000, well we fall between that 53,000 and 469 bracket for the long-term capital gains tax rate. So we will take our gain, which is $90,000, and multiply that by the 15%, which will give us a total of 
$13,500. Now remember, our short-term capital gains tax amount was $15,680. And now our long-term capital gains tax is $13,500. So the tax savings that we have, if we were in the long-term bracket, let's say if we held the property for more than a year, you would have saved $2,180 by holding your asset for more than one year as opposed to holding it for one year or less and then selling it. So that's the capital gains tax rate. Now moving on to the depreciation recapture tax. Now with the depreciation recapture tax, these are taxed at the ordinary income tax rates. And so how this works is that when you have an investment property and you've deducted depreciation on that in prior tax years, you have to pay taxes on that depreciation that you've deducted off of your tax return. So in the calculation of the depreciation, let's just assume that you've purchased a single family property for $200,000. Now the average lifespan of residential real estate is 27.5 years. So to determine your depreciation, you would take the cost of your property and divide it by the useful life, which is 27.5 years. So since we spent $200,000 on a property and we divide that by 27.5 years, that means you would get to deduct $7,273 on your tax return every single year as long as you continue to hold that asset. Now let's say you decide to sell it within a 10 year period. That means you were able to deduct $72,730. Now let's determine what our gain on this sale is for this property. So we purchased this property for $200,000 and then we turned around and sold it for $255,000 after 10 years. That means we have a capital gain, a long-term capital gain of $55,000. Now, since we are in that $53,000 to $469,000 tax bracket because our gain on the sale of this property is $55,000, we're paying 15% tax rate on this gain. So we would take $55,000, which is our gain, our long-term gain, multiply that by 15 and that would give us $8,250. Now we have to go back and tax ourselves on the depreciation that we've taken in the 10, in the 10 years that we've held this property. So remember, we had accumulated $72,730 in depreciation and we are in that 24% tax bracket. Our total tax would be for the depreciation recapture would be $17,455. So we have the $8,250 on the long-term capital gains tax, and now we have to pay taxes on a depreciation of $17,455. So that gives us a total depreciation tax of $25,705. That's how much you have to pay taxes on. So you would owe the IRS $25,705 in taxes for selling this residential real estate and not doing a 1031 exchange. Now I know everyone wants to know what are the qualifications to do a 1031 exchange. Well the first qualification is the properties must be like kind. Meaning if you are selling a single family resident then you can buy another residential real estate property. Now the second qualification is the 1031 exchange only applies to real property and not intangible property or personal property. And the third qualification is you must have a gain in order to do a 1031 exchange because you cannot recognize a loss. And the fourth qualification is you have a certain time frame to do a 1031 exchange. Now if you found value in this video, drop your comments down below. And if you want to work with me personally, where I can help guide you through you know, a 1031 exchange or any other questions that you may have, then click that link down there below to book a call with me. So until then, I will see you all on the next video.